Hello Bless channel, welcome to this new tutorial. I hope you've all seen my video about jewelry design. It means we're going to have a lot more creative freedom. And here we are with this much expected tutorial. Welcome and enjoy the tutorial. First, I'm front view, add curve, Bezier circle, radius 19.3 divided by two, align to the view, resolution, 45 um, don't forget to save and be happy now top view add bezier circle radius 5 go to edit mode take this vertex move it here scale it like this exit edit mode adapt it any way you like it's going to be the section of the ring now take the initial circle Go to Geometry, Bevel Object, select your shape here. Now, if the orientation is not correct, go to Edit Mode. Everything is selected. Adapt the tilt. Mine will be minus 90 degrees. Also, don't forget that you can adapt the position of the section on the curve by moving it in Edit Mode on the Y axis in my case, like this. And also don't forget to adapt the relative scale like this to make it look good. Like this. Exit edit mode, save and be happy. Now, take the ring, make a copy on the Y axis. Remove the bevel, convert it to mesh. Go to edit mode, AF, extrude on the Y axis here. Adapt the normals to the outside. Call this finger size save and be happy now take the ring and adapt it to the finger size here make a copy hide the original convert the copy to mesh call it call it by your ring mesh now let's go to modifier add modifier this place add a new texture call it bio go to textures and in texture type let's go to stuki now pattern let's go to wall out type hard now here let's go back to modifiers let's add a subdivision surface and put it before the displacement level 5 or depending your needs and now we can clearly see that the biomorphic shape is taking place already and now it's all about adapting the numbers until we get the shape we want so basically we're going to go to texture and work on the size maybe bigger we can also play with the turbulence experiment with the numbers and now don't forget that you can also tweak the strength here in the displace modifier so now this is all very pretty but remember this is the finger size and this is the ring obviously you could do a full ring on the finger but it will tend to cut your poor finger with all these sharp edges. Let's tweak something about the geometry. Let's go to edit mode on the ring, mesh, front view, alt Z transparency, C circle selection, make the circle pretty big. Here, center your cursor to the perfection, click, escape the circle selection, go to data, vertex group, plus, Assign these vertices to the group, name the group flat, do a control I, new vertex group, assign, call this design, exit edit mode. Now go to the displacement modifier and down here, vertex group on the design. This is pretty nice, but it's just not perfect yet. We can do a little better. We want to optimize this. Convert everything to mesh. Be a bit patient, obviously, because we have a lot of geometry. Go to decimate. Be patient again. Now we have almost 9 million faces. Let's go at point 15 or whatever ratio suits you. Now here you'll have to be even more patient because you know that many faces it's going to take some time to calculate the decimation. Now, don't forget that you need to apply the decimate here. And guess what? You'll have to be patient again. You might repeat the decimation process 
to lower the face count even more. And now that the decimation is done, now here, let's add a mesh sphere. Make it bigger. Move it to the side so it slightly touches the edges. Now add a mirror modifier based on the original circle and find the proper axis. Mine is the Z axis. Don't forget to shade smooth. Take the ring mesh, add a boolean modifier, difference, fast, remove the spheres to get clean inside edges and adapt it as you like. Now, don't forget to put the shade auto smooth, save and be happy. Let's create some super nice render scene for our biomorphic ring. So first we're going to create a floor, add mesh plane, make it pretty big. Let's put it here. Now add modifier, subdivision surface, but use the simple one here. Level five, add a displace modifier, new texture. Let's call it floor. Let's go to textures. This texture is going to be the musgraph type here. Now it's all about tweaking the numbers and the strength. I'm going to make it smaller, something like this. Don't forget to tweak the resolution of the subdivision modifier and tweak the strength anywhere you like. Now put it into place here so it carries the ring somewhere. I want the floor to be pretty blocky and pretty sharp, so I'm not going to smooth it. Now let's tweak the camera. Let's make a square resolution. Let's make an alt control zero to place the camera, adapt the clip and to something much further and adapt the focal length any way you like. Don't forget to hide from rendering the elements you don't need. Now add empty plane axis, you know, for the DOF, let's put it somewhere here. Call it depth of field. Off. Let's take the camera, go to camera settings, depth of field, focus on the DOF. We'll tweak it later when making the render preview. Now we need some HDRI environment. Let's go to environment, texture. So I'm going to use the Cape Hill 4K HDR. You can find it on the web. It's very easy to find this HDR. Now let's make just a simple render preview. Everything's going to be gray. Here we have some counter light because my camera is at the back. Now we need materials. Let's go to now here in shading. Let's take the floor. New material, call it floor. Let's make it metallic at 0.5. Let's add um, an ambient occlusion node to the color right there. Distance 50. Now let's add a pebble node to the normal 16 samples. Add um, texture, musgrave texture, height to normal. This is obviously wrong because you would need a bump map, but sometimes it looks very nice the wrong way. We just need to adapt the color of the floor. Now let's do another mistake. Add input texture coordinate and plug the reflection into the color right there. Now add an HSV right there and add a mixed color right here before. This one's going to be blue. Mix it in the proportion that you like. I want a type of C floor. You can adapt the look of the floor even more by adding another subdivision modifier and if necessary, by adding another displacement modifier. Let's add a point light right here. Find the proper position. Let's tweak the power. Let's tweak the size. Now on the floor, adapt the scale of the mass grab. Something like this. Let's duplicate the mass grab. Let's add a bump modifier, height to height. Let's plug this new one to the normal right there. Tweak the size. The first mass grab, plug it to strength here. Add a brightness and contrast node right here and tweak it as needed. Add a displacement node right here to displacement. Now here add Voronoi texture right here. Distance 
to height right there. Now, nothing is going to happen because you need to go down here in settings, surface displacement, displacement, and bump right there. Now, obviously, it's all about tweaking the scale of the displacement modifier and the scale of the Voronoi texture. Don't forget to save and be happy. Now, don't forget that we did something very cool on this floor. Thanks to the two musgrav texture on the bump, don't forget that you can tweak between the bump and the sharpness effect. So I'm going to keep some sharp edges using the contrast that's actually causing the two musgrav textures to mix in the bump. So now obviously we need a material on our biomorphic ring, new material. Let's call this ceramic. So here, the first thing you want to do is turn on the subsurface to one. Now here, it's all about tweaking the colors. Add an RGB node, plug it to base color, add an ambient occlusion node, plug it here in the middle, distance 50, copy the RGB node, plug it to the subsurface color, right there. Add a bevel node, right here on the normal right there. Now, this looks very poor. Honestly, this is ugly. So to make it really cool, let's do something totally wrong, just like we did earlier. The subsurface, let's go at two. Let's keep a bit of transmission. This is a good idea. Metallic, not too much. Now, let's take the HSB node here and let's work here on the value and the hue until we get something really amazing. Tweak the roughness. If you want something more realistic, you can tweak the ceramic any way you like. And let's tweak, let's tweak the depth of field, something very small because we are very close to the ring. Don't forget to check the samples, the denoiser, optics in this case. Don't forget that the light path bounces should be pretty high. Check your performance depending on your hardware. Check the resolution. So this is the result of this version. A very nice contrast like a lava looking biomorphic ring, ceramic ring. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you soon.